The Trump administration is warning congressional lawmakers Iran may retaliate against the U.S. within weeks. Military and intelligence agencies expect Iran to respond to the U.S. airstrike that killed an Iranian military commander. That retaliation could come in the form of attacks on U.S. allies in the Middle East. They could also be carried out in the U.S. Iran's president is threatening retaliation that will last several years. In response to political tension, around 70 protests across the country were held to speak out against further aggression toward the Middle East. News 8's Travis Robinson spoke with local protesters today about why they fear a war could break out. Yeah, well, Nina, as early as just a few hours ago, President Trump tweeted out that he's ready to strike 52 locations of importance to Iran. US Protesters hoisted anti-war signs into the air, fearing the worst after a U.S. airstrike killed an Iranian general. Iran definitely doesn't want a war with the U.S., but these things can escalate very quickly, um, you know, and it's easy to sort of jump the rung on the escalation ladder, and it's very, it's very difficult to get off. Through protest, they say they want the world and their own government to know they don't stand behind the actions of the country's leadership. We have a responsibility to say not in our name because these decisions are never made democratically. We reached out to several organizations to see what those for the airstrikes had to say. As of the story, none have responded. However, several Indiana representatives have already made statements putting their support behind the airstrikes and the president. Greg Pence, a member of the House Committee on Foreign Affairs, says evil has been taken off the earth and I stand firmly in support of President Trump. Senator Todd Young says justice was delivered, and Senator Mike Braun says he is proud President Trump is protecting our country and our allies. But protesters say even if U.S. actions don't start a war, it will become a major blemish on the country's reputation. I think the U.S. is increasingly seen as sort of a bully that bombs and sanctions and, you know, commits other acts of aggression to get what it wants, regardless of what people of the world actually want. I think most people of the world don't want war. Now, if you'd like to read more on the situation between Iran and the United States, we've got plenty of coverage from the last couple of days on our website. We've talked to Iranian Americans, spoke to Middle Eastern experts, and more. All you have to do is head over to wishtv.com. I'm Travis Robinson, Wish TV News 8. More than two dozen Hoosiers gathered today demanding the U.S. avoid a war with Iran. They protested at the Richard Luger Plaza downtown. These men and women are with the Answer Coalition. That stands for Act Now to Stop War and End Racism. They say the strike to kill a top Iranian general this week is an illegal act by the president and the Pentagon. Indianapolis, one of several communities taking to the streets as tensions rise between the U.S. and Iran. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Nicole Griffin. The question on everybody's mind tonight, what happens next after the killing of a top Iranian official at the direct orders of President Trump? Our Troy Washington was downtown today as people gathered calling for peace. I mean, it's clear that Iran has to retaliate in some way. That's the thought that brought people out in downtown Indianapolis on a dreary Saturday. It's hard to pull something like this off, especially on such short notice. But somehow Derek Ford and the Answer Coalition pulled it off in less than 24 hours. Signs waving near Delaware and Washington Street, a protest for peace in between on and off showers. After the killing of an Iranian general made some feel retaliation would be inevitable. There's going to be something. Even though President Trump Trump says this doesn't mean war. Some aren't convinced. Protests like this one popping up all across the U.S., giving groups a chance to express their opinion about what happens going forward. We are one of over 74 cities in the U.S. It's protesting today. A result of fear that the killing of General Qasim Soleimani will have some consequence. If you start something, somebody else is going to finish it. The U.S. is sending 3,000 soldiers to the Middle East following the killing, but defense officials say the deployments aren't in response to a strike. Not everyone believes the latest activity is harmless. Everything that happens is affects us. Working for you, Troy Washington, RTV6. Troy, thank you. The White House has formally notified Congress about the airstrike. The notice must be sent within 48 hours of U.S. forces entering into hostilities in accordance with the War Powers Act. The act is a series of procedural requirements to make sure presidents keep Congress informed on military decisions. Meanwhile, thousands gathered on the streets of Baghdad at the funeral procession for Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. Chants of death to America rang through the crowd. See like that are fueling fears of another Middle East war. Some Democratic lawmakers share those concerns. 
The question we have to be asking ourselves today is whether Qasem Soleimani is more dangerous to the United States alive or dead as a martyr. Other Democrats angry that they were not informed before the strike, but the president defending his decision saying Soleimani was planning a major attack on U.S. interests. A U.S. intelligence bulletin says Iran will almost certainly retaliate overseas against U.S. and Israeli officials and interests. There are concerns here at home as well, putting New York and other major cities on heightened alert. But authorities have emphasized there is no specific credible well, demonstrators threat. across the country are calling for peace between the U.S. and Iran. Back here in Indianapolis, there was a few people who gathered on Monument Circle last night in a silent demonstration. The organizers spoke before the event, saying no one benefits from war. We've sunk trillions of dollars into wars that have done nothing but destabilize the region and displace or kill millions of people. Several anti-war demonstrations were also held in cities like San Francisco, New York City, and Miami. My name is Connie Thompson. I'm a member of the Party for Socialism and Liberation. I'm also an organizer with the Answer Coalition here in Indiana. Um, I spoke today about pinkwashing and manufacturing consent um, and how queer people of the United States do not want to have this war in Iran uh, waged in their name and how, how the, crim the criminal media will push wars by lying to us about how they just have so much concern about uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people in Iran when they don't actually care about those same people here in the United States at home. Um, so I'm just he I was I was here speaking against that narrative uh, to try and make sure that the the capitalist elite cannot try to manufacture consent for this war that we do not want. We actually have a follow-up meeting. We'll have a, an indoor forum where it won't be windy um, or cold uh, this Thursday, this upcoming Thursday next week um, at the A&P building on the east side. We also, um, we, we will also continue to fight this war in Iran as, as the conditions change and as uh, new events unfold. Uh, we'll, we'll be out here uh, and we'll be out here for as long as it takes to make sure that this war doesn't happen. Just like we defeated the war in Venezuela, we will defeat the war in Iran. Hello, uh, my name is Riley Bo. Um, I am a member of the Answer Answer Indiana Coalition, and I'm a party. Uh, I'm a member of the Party for Socialism and Liberation. Basically, we're we're out here, basically protesting the uh, latest in what has seemed to be like a um, a calculated attack on Iran by the U.S. government. Um, the U.S. government has been upping the ante, I should say, the upping the ante of, like, already destabilizing relations with, Ira with the Iranian government. Um, the U.S. war machine needs to be, e needs to end. Um, basically, this is just, in my personal opinion, I feel like this is used as a bargaining, like, uh, some sort of bargaining chip. For his for Trump's re-election re and kind of a distraction from his um, from his impeachment process proceedings right now. This is not, this I'm gonna say that this is not the first time that the U.S. government has done this. Um, in my speech, I talked on uh, the Vietnam War, um, how the U.S. government had waged a war against against Vietnam in the in the 60s and 70s basically destroyed destroyed the environment in um, in Vietnam and also um, led thousands of people to be sick um, from Agent Orange and that was just another thing of US imperialism um, I also touched on Korea I have ancestral ties to Korea and so um, Growing up, learning about like the Korean War and how thousands of people were dying and sick, and thousands of children were left orphaned, and the U.S. government still holds occupation in 
the, on the Korean Peninsula to this day. So I call for the end of U.S. imperialism and the U.S. war machine.